is the gestation period. In other words, how long that baby's cooking for or that bun in the oven is cooking for. We've all heard the, the normal time, right? Nine months. However, in the medical field, we don't necessarily use months, we use weeks. And so full gestation, full pregnancy term is 40 weeks. So here at 35 weeks, another five weeks, still has another month. So we're right around eight weeks, I'm sorry, eight months, right? Well, what is what risk of distress is there for the baby? See, there I go. What what risk is there for the fetus? The lungs aren't developed. And that's the biggest thing. The lungs are like the last to develop. So how should the EMTs prioritize the order of the information they need? Really, it's just the set of questions you're going to ask. But I guess the biggest thing is, is this kid coming? Or are these kids coming? And the factors that are going to help determine whether it's time to transport the patient to the hospital is, are some of those signs that the kids are coming present? And we'll talk about those. So, remember that childbirth is a natural process. It was going on long before there was medicine. So really, our job as EMTs is to assist in the delivery. So hopefully there's not a lot for us to do except for catch a little squinkling, a little drain on lives. I'm mean, just kidding. So um, we're just there to assist. Now, out of hospital deliveries are rare, but they do, they do occur. Thankfully, they don't occur that often. Now, the good thing is that most childbirths don't have any complications. However, there are times when we might find, find some. Because a lot of times there's there's warning that these kids are coming. And they go and we're like, OK. And there's some that for whatever reason, they don't make quite make it to the car or to the hospital. So you might be confronted with that. All right. So. <clears throat> As far as the anatomy, we know the female reproductive system. We have the ovaries, the fallopian tubes. We have the uterus. Um, you see, the ovaries where the eggs produce, or where the 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 egg is stored, uh, it produces hormones, estrogen. And about every 28 days, it releases an egg. And it travels down the fallopian tube where it travels waiting to be fertilized. So if the egg comes in contact with sperm, possibility of getting fertilized. Once it gets fertilized, it keeps on going. It keeps going anyway. But if it is fertilized, <clears throat> it keeps traveling until it gets to the uterus. In the uterus, that fertilized egg is getting implanted within the uterine wall. And so for the guys that don't know, and I'm going to sound very stupid, especially with a bunch of women in the class, when enough time passes, if the uterus didn't receive a fertilized egg, then the, the, um, uh, the menstrual period is the sloughing off of tissue in the excess blood that wasn't needed after all. So it all rinses out and 
it gets ready to try again in about 28 days. Okay. So, um, when's the period? Usually about two weeks after the last menstrual cycle is when a woman is the most fertile. All right. As far as the layers, just like we have with the heart muscle, we have the endometrium, the myometrium, and the parametrium. So with the heart, we have the endocardium, myocardium, and the pericardium. So same prefixes. Um, it is these, the smooth muscle layer of the uterus that is contracting during labor. And it's what it's actually doing is it's opening up so the cervical opening is actually getting bigger to allow for that fetus to go through. So the pain that a woman has or experiences, the labor pains, is just the uterus contracting and opening up the cervix. So it needs to dilate. All right. Now, within the uterus is another organ. It's a temporary organ. It goes away, as you saw in the video, which we call the placenta. The placenta attaches itself to the uterus, and it kind of acts as a filter. So the blood within the uterus actually goes through into the placenta, and the placenta will, will send the blood down an umbilical artery into the fetus, and then whatever comes out of the fetus goes back through the umbilical vein into the, the placenta. That goes through back into the uterus, and that gets into the, the maternal blood flow, and the parent-to-be eventually does what it's going to do to whatever is in there. Now, the, the, the placenta is very, very vascular. A lot of blood vessels. And we'll talk about some of that bleeding stuff later on. And so after birth, what happens is the placenta separates away from the uterus. They poop it out. Well, not really, but as you saw, it comes out. And then we put it in a bag, we take it to the hospital, and they check it for completeness, and then they get rid of it. They'll offer, I think they'll offer you, they'll offer it to you if you want it. Yeah, sometimes you can keep it. Uh, Myra, her sister had a baby a couple years ago, or during her class, and uh, she asked me if I, I wanted her to bring it in to show the class. I'm like, yeah, sure. So she brought a cooler, and that was her niece's or nephew's uh, placenta and showed it around. So that was kind of cool, kind of trippy. All right, so coming from the placenta is the umbilical cord. Or think about a tether. So again, it's going from the, from the placenta into the fetus. So it's one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. You don't need to know how many arteries and veins are there. It's not yet. So within the uterus is a sac. We call that the amniotic sac. And within this sac, there's amniotic fluid. And within this fluid, this fetus kind of is doing the backstroke, kind of floating, doing uh, treading water, so to speak. It's just in there. Now, in order for for um, how can I put it? Um, once the water breaks, that's basically the amniotic sac rupturing, and that amniotic fluid is coming out. And so you know. When they do an amniocentesis, they're actually using, or what they're actually doing through the use of ultrasound, is they're putting a needle within the womb, within the amniotic sac, and they're taking out amniotic fluid. 
they could actually run genetic tests and other types of tests through that fluid. And so when the water breaks, that's actually what's uh, coming out is that amniotic fluid. All right, then we get past the cervix and into the vaginal canal, also called the vagina, also called the birth canal. Until it's out and you threaten kids about throwing them back in there, but you can't, unfortunately. So this is what it looks like. So you have, uh, they're not showing the ovaries or the fallopian tubes, but you see the uterus and look at how big it gets. Remember when we talked about trauma last week, how the diaphragm is right up in here. So that's one thing to think about. Women are very prone to heartburn also when they're pregnant. There's the placenta right in here. It's attaching to the placental wall. I'm sorry, to the uterine wall. Here's the tether, the umbilical cord attaches to the fetus. Here's the amniotic fluid, which you can't really see in there. You have the cervix, the cervical opening, and then you have the vaginal canal or the birth canal. Okay. Here's the bone, the, the symphysis pubis. Okay. Now, Partly why this is our fault, guys, like when they have to pee every two minutes, because that thing that you're responsible for, or for putting her in that condition, is right here. The urinary bladder. Well, what's right on top of that? The fetus. And, huh? The whole fetus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so what do you think it's doing to the ur urinary bladder? It's putting pressure on it. And what is it doing to the, the holding capacity? Makes it smaller makes it smaller. So again, it's your fault why she has to pee every two minutes. Now I'm not going to tell you why yet, but I want you to observe something. This area right over here, notice the tag. So just remember the location of this compared to everything else. We'll come back to that. We talked about menstrual cycle. Ow. Oh. All right, 14 days, for the first 14 days after fertilization, pre-embryonic phase, also known as a zygote. It's a zygote. After the two weeks, up to eight weeks, it's an embryo. And after eight weeks, it is a fetus. And then once it's once it's born, oh, another fetus. Once it's born, it's called a neonate until about uh, 28 days later, where it becomes now an infant. We talked about this the other day in trauma, didn't we? Physiologic changes in pregnancy. Blood volume goes up 40 to 50%. Hormone changes. Mood swings. This is why when she's in pain, she's reminds you that this is all your fault. Cravings. Cravings is also a guy's fault. Any any interesting cravings in here? 
during pregnancy? I used to get pickle juice snow cones from the ice cream truck. Yeah, I hear a lot of pickle juice and pickles. Uh -huh. I was I was oddly into mustard, like I could eat just mustard. Mm. Mine was pickles and peanut butter all mm. the time. I craved peanut butter and I ate it like all day, every day. And oddly enough, my daughter has a severe peanut allergy. <laughs> I guess that would make sense. Um, during the first trimester, a lot of development is going on. And um, that's where you really got to be careful with things. Uh, that's where they. Uh, I'm starting to read that's a little bit safer, but uh, there was a there was a medicine for nausea called Zofran or there is. And they used to say not to give it to women in the first trimester unless they have like hyperemetic syndrome, where they like severe morning sickness. I had that. And I took did they give you anything for it? I, they gave me Zofran. They, they did give you Zofran. Um, yeah, they're starting to. Uh, for a long time, it was you don't give Zofran for the first trimester in pregnancy because uh, it'd been known to cause birth defects, uh, um, heart defects, as a matter of fact. But I think they've, they've gotten more data on it since. Yeah, they monitored me. Um, they monitored me really well. But it's because I couldn't, I wasn't eating anything. Yeah, for the most part, Zofran doesn't have any uh, big side effects, but just with pregnant women. It, it's great for for hangovers. It's great for nausea. I'll just keep it at that. It's great for nausea. Um... Another thing too, a big physiologic change is um, with the changing hormones, it actually weakens insulin. And so women can have uh, what they call gestational diabetes. Uh, that's why they have to do the uh, gluco glucose tolerance tests to see how their hormones are, or well, how insulin is. They're able to adjust or regulate their blood sugar. <sighs> oxygen demand increases. Why would oxygen increase with a pregnant woman? Because isn't there a second being that yeah, requires that excess oh. oxygen demand? Did I tell you the one about my former student that uh, worked on a pregnant female? I didn't tell you guys the story. So we go on a call. I was actually teaching. Uh, an EMT class at this department. And we get a traffic accident and it's, um, the patient is a pregnant female. And so, she grabs a non-rebreather. Which so far, there's nothing wrong with that, right? until she put it on the stomach. Oh, it gets better. The 
This Asha mask is on the stomach and she tells the patient, here's some oxygen so your baby can breathe. Uh, only two problems with that. The belly button is not like an inlet for a fetus, okay? At least the mother's belly button. Number two, is the fetus breathing? No. No. Yeah, thankfully she she chose something else for a career. Thankfully, that's right up there with this EMT student asking me. He was writing out with me. He asked me if we go on decapitation, do you guys start CPR? Yeah, you can go ahead and start bagging the patient for me. I didn't say that, but I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, even though blood volume goes up, blood pressure decreases slightly and then goes back to normal in the third trimester. Do um, you guys know what I mean when I say trimesters? The first three months is the first trimester, the second three months is the second trimester, trimester, and the last three months is the third trimester. All right, GI, we talked about uh, heartburn, but also bloating, constipation can be a problem. Uh, glomerular filtration increases. In other words, a lot more urine is, is getting produced. However, because the bladder is smaller, they are going to urinate a lot more frequently. Mm -hmm. A big thing with musculoskeletal is that because of that added weight, their center of gravity changes. So higher risk of falling down, going boom, and also a lot more back pain. Because it's tilting the back. All right. So questions on the anatomy physiology part. So we're starting to see some changes. Now, pre-delivery emergencies, the first one, and this is during the pregnancy, obviously. It's kind of what we were talking about earlier, hyperemesis gravidarian, gravidarum. In other words, morning sickness, but pretty bad morning sickness, where they can't keep anything down. They need fluid and lots of fluid. Uh, So the big thing is severe nausea and severe vomiting. Um, one of the things, just to give you a little bit of assessment trick, it, and having worked at a place where we have a lot of female employees, that was usually one of my first questions. If they'd been not, uh, nauseous and vomiting, my first question right after that was, actually, no, that was maybe like my third or fourth question. My next question would be, what was the day of your last menstrual period? And then if it was more than a month, is there a possibility you could be pregnant? I'd want to roll out the pregnancy. It could also have been because they were hungover, coming to work drunk or hungover. But um, a big thing more was, is there a possibility you could be pregnant? Are they going through uh, morning sickness? Because by vomiting a lot, what are you becoming? Dehydrated. 
Dehydrated. Good, you're becoming dehydrated. Is that a good thing for a, a pregnant patient to be? Negative. No. No, you don't want to lose more volume. Can afford to really lose a lot of volume. So get that established. Uh, main thing for morning sickness is pretty much supportive, position of comfort if you have to transport them. Um, other things that kind of do help, at least in my experience with nausea vomiting besides Zofran, um, crackers, saltine crackers, and also like lemon lime drinks, like 7-Up, those citrusy drinks. Or not citrusy, uh, citric acid, like lemons, lime, 7-Up, Sprite, although 7-Up works a lot better in my opinion. Now, as far as bleeding goes, bleeding, vaginal bleeding can be a life-threatening condition because it's bleeding. It's internal bleeding that's coming out, becoming extra. We don't know what's causing it. We don't know what happened. So in order for us to stay as a medical condition, what do we have to do first? What do you want to do? Roll out trauma. We want to roll out trauma. Trauma or medical? Well, well, no. Remember what I said. And, and if you think back to when we covered uh, patient assessment, in order for us to go down the medical track, we have to roll out trauma. Yes, sir. Now, so all those are non, uh, the, all those are medical issues. Well, actually, they be caused by trauma, but this is what's resulting. And we'll talk about these individually. Uh, you're gonna have a spontaneous abortion, placenta previa, abruptio placenta, uh, a ectopic pregnancy. So something is causing that bleeding. So remember how I said about not having a, a religious or political discussion on this? I want to make sure you guys understand something. When we hear the word abortion, a lot of us tend to think that it's referring to going to a clinic and terminating the pregnancy, correct? That's, that's a perception a lot of people get. When it comes to medical terminology though, an abortion is not going to a clinic and terminating the pregnancy. An abortion is really the termination of a pregnancy. However, there's two types. The first one's a spontaneous abortion, and that's what we commonly refer to as a miscarriage. But the correct medical term is a spontaneous abortion. The other type of abortion that we have, and this is the one we most often think about, is what they call a therapeutic abortion. So it's actually done by a physician or a healthcare practitioner. Okay. So spontaneous abortion, therapeutic abortion. Spontaneous, it's a miscarriage. Therapeutic is what we commonly think of as an abortion. A spontaneous abortion usually occurs up to about 20 weeks. 
anytime in between that. Usually around, what is it, three months in. That's why you, uh, you'll notice a lot of people don't announce they're pregnant until after the 12th week. Because by then, um, less chance of something happening. Okay. Um, so what's happening or what the, the patient is feeling is a, a lot of uh, a lot of abdominal pain. They might have swelling from the blood loss because it might not be going anywhere or if it's going into the uterus or it is coming from the uterus, so you might have some vaginal bleeding coming out. The other thing that they might see or you might see is uh, clots. Um, like spotting, if, if you guys know what spotting is, they could have some spotting or they could have some severe bleeding. So one thing you always want to do with a spontaneous abortion is obviously you want to treat them for shock and you want to see if they're using any pads and you'll want to make sure to take those pads with you to the hospital because it, and I'm trying not to come across as cold because I really am not. But what they're going to look for is what we call the products of the pregnancy. So they're going to see if, if parts of the fetus are in those clumps. So they need to ma make sure that the products of the pregnancy are in there. Okay. So collect those, take them with you. Another pre-delivery emergency that can cause bleeding is an ectopic pregnancy. So, what is an ectopic pregnancy? The pregnancy that starts to develop in the fallopian tubes, right? Well, doesn't it begin to develop anyway in the Philippine tube? Because cell division occurs shortly after fertilization, right? Yes, sir. Would it include like a fetus? It's always like developed or already developed? No. It implants in the fallopian tube. Okay, that's a uh, part of that is a better definition. And the, the and that's the part about implanting. Where the fertilized egg implants in somewhere other than the uterus. I don't know. Is there a uh, a diagram in your book about the different places it could implant? right there so yes the most common place that it implants is in the fallopian tube but look now how it gets to the outside wall of the uterus i have no idea even in the abdomen how does it implant in the abdomen So, an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy where the where it implants somewhere other than the uterus. So it's continuing to grow, but it's not going to be viable because it never made it to the uterus. Because where is it going to get its blood supply from? the uterus. So if it's not in the uterus, it's never going to develop a blood supply. The bad thing about this is it's still growing. And the reason for the abdominal pain is because now it's stretching the tissue 
let's just stick with the fallopian tube because 90% of them are there. It stretches it, stretches it until it ruptures it. And so as you can see, it follows the path, the blood starts coming down and the, the patient is now experiencing vaginal bleeding. So dull achy pain, maybe radiating the shoulder. Talked about the bleeding. It might have a mass in the abdomen. Because of the bleeding, now blood pressure is decreasing. That's a lot of bleeding, though. So position of comfort, maybe lay in supine shock position, if they're showing those signs and symptoms of shock. Questions so far? All right, the next one. I'm sorry, what was that about the uh, position? I'm sorry, what was that? What was that about the uh, position? The position, shock position. Copy. I've mentioned word association in the past with you guys, with the law of association. I know I had a lot of, of these questions when I did my registry for paramedic here for Texas. Uh, sometimes I, I've had EMT students get a lot of OB questions and I've had them get just a couple of them. It all depends. Everybody's different. Do you remember, Jesse, did Brandon get a lot of will-be questions? I think he didn't hardly get any. Did I mention to you or he didn't get any? He said he didn't get many. He didn't get many? No. Yeah. It all depends. Everybody gets a different test. Because they're random. Um, the thing about uh, placenta previa is obviously it deals with the placenta. But the way I think about previa is I think about previous. And so really what, what that tells me, holy shit. Man, my gas bill has gone up by like 50 bucks. Um, we know where the where the uterus normally sits. I'm sorry, we know where the uterus is, and we know where the placenta normally sits. However, in this case, previous, the placenta is covering up the cervical opening right up in here, or not this circle opening up here. It's blocking the cervix. And so do you think this fetus is going to be able to get through the cervix and down the vaginal canal, the birth canal? No. That's what placenta previa is, where the placenta is covering up the cervical opening. So guess what? They'll probably have to do a C-section to be able to get this fetus out. Because this kid ain't going to go through that solid mass. I remember getting the question on here on, on platinum EMS on the, uh, like, I don't know what it's called, but I remember getting a few questions about this. You shouldn't have. 
unless you did like adaptive testing. Yeah, on the adaptive testing, yeah. Okay, then that's why. So what you'll see, yes, they will have excessive bleeding. But that's because of as the uterus starts to contract, and the cervix starts opening up, it's separating away from the placenta. And remember we talked about the blood vessels, how they they come together. And so you have the separation, so you're gonna have some bleeding. It's not gonna be very painful, but you will have some bleeding. And so this occurs in the third trimester. Okay. So placenta previa, where the placenta covers up the opening of the cervix. with minor abdominal pain. The other one we have is a show placenta. This one is number one, gonna be a lot more painful and a lot more bloody. Again, this is happening usually in the third trimester. You notice the placenta is where it needs to be. However, uh, minimal bleeding, I'm sorry, uh, with minimal bleeding, uh, but a lot more painful. What's happening here is all of a sudden, just abruptly, it abruptly separates from the uterine wall. So it's trickling down. So it abruptly separates from the uterine wall. That's abrupt show placenta. So placenta previa. The placenta covers the cervical opening. Whereas with abrupt show placenta, the placenta is abruptly separating from the uterine wall. So. And it can happen in different places. Uh, and you have partial and you have complete. And I mean by uh, separation. Partial separation from the uterine wall or complete separation or completely becomes a slouch. Um, we talked about trauma and injury to the to the abdomen. So kind of that like that paper bag. So the uterus has been ruptured. And so what we get is, hey, look, that head is going right through the uterus. The danger here is, and as it says here, high mortality rate. Because of the rupturing, now we have a lot of bleeding. And uh, maternal hemorrhaging. Because remember, the uterus is a very vascular organ. So is the mom losing a lot of blood? Yeah. And if she's losing blood, what is the fetus not getting? Oxygen. oxygen. There you go. The fetus is not getting oxygen. Does the fetus like not having enough oxygen? Nope. Talk about fetal distress. So definitely going to surgery. Get that kid out right away. Or try to suture it up. 
All right. Um, what, what, what would be our call in any of these situations, though? What do you mean? Like to tell the uh, receiving medical place is like, oh, it, we believe it's a uh, antepartum or or any of these and a part of whatever um yeah. as you're giving your report so let's say your patient is complaining of of light bleeding but severe lower abdominal pain and she is pregnant and she's approximately 36 weeks and so now you got to think about the possibility of it being a rupture placenta so you as you are giving your report uh um uh, yeah they can go to dorsal now umc we'll go to umc in this case uh umc or medic five umc shows the route to your facility with a 26 to 6 year old female uh who's complaining of uh lower abdominal pain with some uh, light bleeding. Uh, patient states that uh, while sitting down watching TV, she began experiencing uh, severe lower quadrant pain. Um, the patient is approximately 36 weeks uh, gestation. Um, she is appearing to be uh, slightly pale and diaphoretic. Now, just remember this for a little bit later. She is a uh, Gravity three, para two. Um, we have an ETA facility approximately uh, seven to 10 minutes. How do you copy? So you're just kind of setting the stage for it. You use possible because you don't know for sure, but the signs and symptoms are leading you there. And you told them that she's in our third trimester because you said she was 36 weeks along. Plus you told them that she's been pregnant three times and she already has two kids. Copy. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh -huh. So some things you just kind of paint that picture for them. Sir. All right. Pre delivery emergency. Other types of emergencies we have are seizures and hypertensive emergencies. Did any of you ladies have any issues with high blood pressure during your pregnancy? Yeah. Did they have you on bed rest a lot, Jesse? Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend did. She, she ended up having a C-section. How far along was the baby? I think she was eight and a half. Oh, so she was about 38 weeks? Yes, sir. Okay, it's not too bad. That's full term. That's another thing, too. We talked about 40 weeks. Uh, and it talks about it when we get to uh, uh, preemies, premature babies. But really, anything after the 38th week is full term. Anything before the 38th week is a preemie. Uh, a guy I used to work with years ago, this is a partner of mine for a little bit, uh, his wife gave birth, or they had to induce her, or maybe it was, uh, maybe it was a C-section, 20, 24 weeks. She was having a lot of hypertension issues, and so they were putting on bed rest and everything, and it just wasn't helping. So they had to get the fetus out.
So first with seizures, remember that the, the, the patient is not breathing very much. Is that an issue for the fetus? It is. And so overall, we're going to provide the same kind of care as we would any other seizure patient. We want to protect them from, far, from harm, and we want to put them on a high flow of tube, 50 liters via non-rebreather. Okay. Oh yeah, before I forget, now I know there's a couple of you that didn't take the exam. Um, were any of the questions on the exam Monday anything like I said? Well, I didn't take the exam Monday. I mean, <laughs> there was one. So I'm one of them. I know there was like two or three people that didn't take it. <laughs> I bet. Um, so that's why I'm not saying a lot on the matter. However, I think there are some questions where I'm like, don't fight me on this, write it down, that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Was there one in particular about CPR? Now, don't say it. Remember, there's a couple people I haven't taken it. I'll talk about it. I ain't talking about it. I said I'll talk about it. But you don't. You haven't even taken the test. Well, no, but I'll discuss it. I guess. No, we're not discussing it. But not yes, there was one. But anyway. I digress. I sent out the grades. So those are the official grades. If you want to go over it, schedule an appointment with me and we'll go over it one-on-one. -on -one. We'll go over your test. Okay. All right. Um, Why are we transporting them on their left side? To keep them off the inferior vena cable. What do we call it? Not the position, the, the condition. Hypotensive syndrome? A little bit more to that. Supine hypotensive syndrome? That? Supine hypotensive syndrome. Good. Now, the other thing that we can get is what they call PIH, pregnancy induced hypertension. Hopefully, it gets better. And it should after after birth. But got to keep an eye on that on that blood pressure. Because that stays high it could cause eclampsia. Um, other signs of preeclampsia or supinapotensive syndrome is like swelling of the feet. Um, yeah, that's the big one. Uh, uh, uh. And then at the clinic, at the doctor's office, I'll do uh, your analysis and uh, they could do uh, 
they could check for uh, spilled protein in the urine. Uh, there's a preeclampsia and eclampsia. And eclampsia can be deadly, uh, not just for the fetus, but also for the parent to be. Uh, same thing as bef as with the uh, same thing as with um, center previa and a breast shuffle center um, third trimester stuff. And with eclampsia, what it is is uh, can include seizures. Now, from an ALS perspective, I'm just letting you guys know. Uh, we don't normally give the normal um, anti-seizure meds, anticonvulsants like Valium or Midazolam. We'll give them. We'll give them something else, something that that's not going to make that kid all stoned and loopy. Although some some of the toddlers, you want to make them all loopy and knock them out, right? Hi, Mika. Here's a Benadryl for you. I think you're getting here. You're getting a rash here. Let me give you some Benadryl. No? I don't think Paula would trust me to babysit her kids. Hey, I have the injectable Benadryl, so. Now my little one's a fighter. She won't let you. Experienced here. You know, my old is wouldn't either. <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm starting my 30th year in the medical field. 30 years. So Gabe was about 15 when I started. I know I'm making him older than he really is. No, um, it's a long time. Uh, 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 See, there's a swelling of the face, fingers, legs, and feet. If you retain fluid, is that going to increase your blood pressure? Yes. So that's what we have to. Uh, that's what we have to look at. Um, again, if they're young, first pregnancy, uh, they've had uh, high blood pressure. If you take their vitals and their blood pressure is a little bit higher than it should be, start thinking about that. There's a supine hypotensive. I'm not making this a commentary on society, but any female between 12 and 50 could potentially be experiencing an obstetric emergency. Damn. Should it be like 18 to 50? Or for some of you dads out there, should it be like 40 to 50? You don't want them dating or being with boys till they're at least like 40. <laughs> yeah, at least 25. My my sister's boyfriends knew I had guns. And so what did the oldest do? She waited until she went off to college. Uh, <laughs> now my other brother-in-law, my, my youngest sister's husband, doesn't work because he was a Marine. And my baby sister just turned 43, and her husband's older than I am. So how do you think I feel? But he's a Marine, so he can shoot better than me, so I'm kind of like, I'm stuck.
Marines are aren't all that bad. They're They're cocky as hell, though. Of course, yeah. Um. I read a byline just the other day, and I think she was nine, and the dad was like 11 or 12. She just gave birth, and she was like nine years old. I was like, what the, number one. Number two, and and you guys can maybe attest to this. Are kids hitting puberty earlier and earlier, or younger and younger? Anybody know, have an idea why? My daughter's doctor said it's because the hormones in our food. Yep, especially milk. Remember that they, they pump up those cows with hormones to be able to produce milk a lot sooner and a lot of milk. So yeah, there's a lot more hormones in the foods that we eat. See, there's all sorts of chemicals in the foods we eat. So are you saying to stop feeding your children? How does this work? That's, that's yeah, that's why they don't grow up. That's why I've been plant-based for a couple of months. Go plant-based, you feel way better. There's always there's always gonna be something though that's gonna be put into your body, and I don't just mean immunizations. I know how people feel about that, but I mean even like fruits and vegetables. You know, really, what is organic? They don't use pesticides. They use fertilizers. What are fertilizers? Cow shit. What do cows eat? Yeah, you're right. It's the same stuff. And it's like, you ever notice drinks? 5% real fruit juice. Only 5%? They're advertising it as like orange juice or something? Only 5% real fruit juice. Well, what's the other 95%? It's orange flavored, okay? It's all these chemicals are putting together to create that taste. Why not just put the real thing? Money. Anyway, I digress. I digress. The reason I'm kind of putting this seed into your head about kids getting, hitting puberty younger and younger. The main thing I want you all to remember is any woman of childbearing age and we don't want to think about little girls being sexually active but the reality is that that's the reality that girls younger and younger i know this little girl she starts a little now she's like 15 but since she was like nine or ten she was sending pictures of to boys of her in her underwear it's like what the flock like why any woman of childbearing age, you need to be thinking about pregnancy. And so a question you have to ask is the date of your last menstrual period. Anything related to nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding, you need to be asking them, what was the date of your last menstrual cycle? Now, if it's been more than a month, the next question you should be asking, and there's a couple ways to say it. The way that I I say it, the way I ask it is, is there a possibility that you could be pregnant? Now, to me, that sounds less intrusive than, as, than asking them, are you sexually active? Or better yet, are you having sex? I mean, that is really none of our business. But just something broad of, is there a possibility you could be pregnant? 
Now, sometimes you might get, once you ask that second question, is there a possibility you could be pregnant with, I'm usually irregular. Okay. Do you have an idea how irregular you are? Always keep by high next to suspicion. Now, especially for the guys, just because you have an overweight female doesn't mean they're pregnant. Don't assume they're pregnant. It'll save you from getting slapped or kicked or kneed. But just, just find out. Okay. I almost had a tobacco or a nicotine emergency. Um, what else? Uh, so you ask them that, and then we'll get to other questions in a bit. Mm. Actually, let's get to those other questions. David, last menstrual cycle, is it possible you could be pregnant? You want to ask them if they are pregnant, uh, how far along are they? Now you'll notice, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when a patient is pregnant, do they start talking in weeks instead of months? Because the clinic staff talks to them in weeks? Yeah. And how many, uh, how far along do you know the sex of the baby? Do you get that ultrasound? Nineteen weeks. I was waiting to see if somebody said nineteen weeks to put my point of weeks. I was waiting anyway. for the girls. I was like, damn, am I gonna say it? <laughs> yeah, say it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna lean back against my wall and go to sleep. I'm just thinking about how many classes we have left together. Um, a good idea also, this is not just for, um, well, this is kind of a gynecologic emergencies. Actually, we talked about that with the gynecologic emergencies. If they have vaginal bleeding, what do you want to establish besides are you pregnant? Hmm. Pads? Would it be like sexual abuse? No. How many pads have you gone through? How many pads have you gone through? Uh, you want to palpate, examine the abdominal region? Had a lady, she wasn't pregnant, but she had some vaginal bleeding. I, I think I told you this one. Uh, the blood had soaked through her jeans. She had a lot of bleeding going on. Um, Look, with any of these uh, situations, would the uh, BP be irregular or? What do you mean? Like, would it be like hypertension or not? Luckily, it's been a while since I've been on a, a pregnant female call. It's actually, was it? Not in, uh, in 19, I think, is the last time I had an OB call. Um, thankfully, nothing happened. Just monitored her. 
Uh, for hypertension, again, depending on, on which trimester they're in, it could be a bad sign. So really what you want to do is that they relax. Keep them calm, turn off the lights, have them nap. Just think about when you're stressed out. What helps relieve that stress? And don't say drink a beer. Because right now you're pregnant, so you can't drink a beer. Yes, sir. What do you do to relax or to de-stress? Just like turn the lights off. Sleep. Sit side. Yeah, sit on your side. Pretty much. Yeah. So that should help bring the blood pressure down a little bit. If it's not going down, then you want to get them to the hospital very, very quickly. You've got to monitor them. But no, it doesn't happen very often. Luckily, a lot of times when you get called uh, via 911 for a pregnant female, either A, they're starting to feel some pain and nothing happens. Their water hasn't broken, the, the contractions are too far apart, uh, their husbands aren't around to take them or their the baby daddies aren't around to take them. Um, Or, which has happened to me is, also, is the kid was just born. So it's just monitoring two patients. Right. So no, it's not something that you should worry too much about. It's more something that you want to observe and just keep an eye on. Keep an eye out. Yeah. Okay. Other things you want to find out. And this is where I was talking about earlier. Grab it a three, pair a two. If they have been pregnant, how many times? And so we say it. So again, if they've been pregnant three times, it's gravita. Gravita means how many how many pregnancies? They've been pregnant three times. Paragravita is how many live births? So that patient from earlier, gravity three, para two means she's been pregnant three times and has, has had two live births. And if she's pregnant right now, guess what? That's where that other one is at. What about you're going on a pregnant female and she's Gravity two, para two. She had twins. Good. She had twins. So she's pregnant for the second time. The first time it was twins. Okay. Now the other one. Uh, we don't use it too much in EMS, but it's used in clinics. Um, if they've had abortions, and again, I don't mean the other one. If, if they've had a miscarriage or even a, a therapeutic abortion, we would put AB for abortion. <laughs> the other thing, any previous or any expected complications? Does the doctor expect any complications? Because if they are, guess what? Now you got to start thinking, I kind of want to stay on top of this. Um, talk about those separate ones. Hello. Huh? So we had this girl in our crew. We're out, we're out on the fire. And I suspect that she had like a like some type of 
heat seizure or something, but it ended up being that she was pregnant and she had a like miscarriage out on the line and nobody knew how to deal with it. Well, well, as far as the miscarriage, it's you got to look uh, look at her vitals. Uh, is she bleeding? So you got to think about um, blood. I'm sorry, oxygen. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe in the shock position. Yeah, all we did was like treat her for shock and like we uh, centipede it or whatever it's called out because we're up like a thousand feet from <laughs> where she needed to go. Did, uh, did she know she was pregnant? She, supposedly she did it. And that makes sense then. Because with the hypertension, I'm thinking maybe preeclampsia. However, um, because of the arduous exercise, <coughs> were you guys out on a fire? Yeah, we were out on a fire. We weren't really, we were attacking, uh, it wasn't like direct fire. It was like, it was indirect. It was indirect You're fire. Line? Yeah, we we're just doing indirect line. But we were like pushing it because it was really close. And I mean, it was Arizona. So it was like 110. Yeah. Um, she, it was like she never shouted. Like she was like this tiny girl. All of a sudden, she just falls out. Yeah, it it really does sound that it was more of the exertion that that caused her to to miscarry. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, not knowing in 110 degree weather. And you're sweating like crazy, and you need to be drinking a lot of water to begin with. And then being pregnant didn't help. So, yeah, that exertion is what caused it, would be my guess. Yeah, and we're, we're like, oh, she just couldn't hack it. No. Like, well, maybe it was something else. And, and it, it did end up being something else, but it's just crazy to like try to tell something. Or, I don't know, document something like that. No, I mean, all you can document is just what happened. You know, how, how did you find out she was pregnant? After the fact? After the fact, yeah. Yeah, see, so if if she didn't know, you didn't know, how, how can you say anything? Um, I, you know, you got to take care of what's presenting. How she's presenting. And so taking a set of vitals and, you know, on the fire line, so obviously fluid, O2, uh, shade, rest, get her off the fire line. Yeah, I took, like, I took her off the fire line and into the shade and I took her fucking yellows out and just cool her off, have her drink some electrolytes and she was just like puking. And I was like, holy shit, like, what's going on with you? It's like, I don't know. By the way, was it somebody in here post a uh, fire line EMT jobs for this upcoming fire season? I don't know, but that's all about me. <laughs> yeah, it, it says it pays 800 bucks a day to be a fire line EMT. What? Yeah, the minimum, the minimum of the minimum I've been offered is 600 bucks a day. Not even qualified. That's what you make in a week. No, a day. This. 500 bucks a day, not even qualified EMT. Just having the training. I just say I'm Mexican and I don't want to do more gardening work. That's just racial profiling. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love being a hotshot, but yeah, I'd rather take... 800 500 bucks a day for a medic standing in the ac right next to uh ambulance yeah 
So, the, guys, and I just have another one of my students from the last morning class. She just passed registry yesterday. So the jobs are out there. You guys want the jobs in this. Some of you have heard working at live, they want you. They need you. Jobs are out there. So put up with my bullshit for another couple of weeks and pass your registry and go go make more money. Not initially though. Look outside El Paso, just mm -hmm. for a little bit. They're called deployments, but you're out there for like two, three weeks, and that's it. One thing with, last slide and we'll take a break. Uh, the thing about, uh, and I think we talked about this with, with trauma, um, if you have to do CPR on the, on the bomb, or mom to be. Uh, what we're trying to do is keep that fetus alive. Just do CPR until you get them to the hospital, and they'll do a quick C section and go from there. Okay, but remember, you're doing CPR for two in this case. So put forth the effort. All right. Uh, so liver normal delivery. We will start that after the dinner break. Actually, because I'm excited to get back to this. Uh, 15 minutes. All right. I'll see you at 8.15.